It's time to spice up your life. A closer look into some herbs and spices right here on Majid's Kitchen. Let's get right into the video and begin with Sichuan peppercorns. Known for the tingling and numbing effect on the tongue, this is a difficult spice to substitute, a key ingredient in making Zhechuan sauce, like here in Mapo Tofu. Zhechuan beef, Zhechuan chicken, and numerous dishes. I've used this in my oxtail stew. Check out the recipe right here on the channel. White peppercorns up next, produced from fully ripened pepper berries that are soaked for several days and the outer layer removed. The pepper is very aromatic, not as strong as black, an aromatic and rounded flavor used towards the end of cooking in Thai cuisine. Green peppercorns are fruitier and milder and are usually pickled or brined used in this classical dish like filet of steak in green peppercorn sauce. Green peppercorns become red and are not as strong in flavor as when they fully ripened black pepper. Used in a red wine peppercorn sauce for steak and works well with fish and shellfish. Black peppercorns are ripened pepper berries that are picked and dried and best stored in an airtight container. It is both a spice and a seasoning. Make a dish using black pepper. Check out the recipe in the Thai playlist. The next ingredient is nutmeg. Nutmeg is a seed which forms after it's dried in the sun for several weeks. The nutmeg shrinks away from its outer seed. Thought of as an autumn spice, it is used whole or ground. Nutmeg is used in both savory and sweet dishes like cakes and donuts too. Used in soups, cream and cheese sauces. Pumpkin pie anyone? Okay, cardamom's up. Cardamom has a unique flavor used in breads and buns in the Nordic countries. Works well in Indian sweets. Also drinks like chai tea. Not forgetting these delicious donuts, Cook Sisters from South Africa. Moving on to fenugreek, both a herb and a spice. Herbs from dried leaves and spice from the seeds used in various cuisine. Egyptian, Iranian, Moroccan, the Arabian Peninsula, Eritrea and Ethiopian cuisine. I use it in curries mostly. This leathery looking piece of fruit is Garcinia or Malabar Tamarind, also known as Brindleberry. It is called Goraka in Sri Lanka and used like tamarind especially in curries. Adding a wonderful note of acidity and a slight smoky flavor. Next we move on to mustard seeds. Commonly found in three colors, black, brown and a slightly tan or yellowish color. The darker the color, the hotter the mustard. The yellowish or light tan seeds are used to make yellow mustard. Next up we go to cloves, widely used in cosmetic toothpaste and fragrance. Clove oil is a hood and even food preservative, used in French cuisine to make bechamel sauces by studying an onion with cloves. Works in both sweet and savory dishes, poached pears, meat and rice dishes, pumpkin pie and even a cup of chai. Coriander an annual plant, both a spice and a herb, also known as Chinese parsley, distinct in flavor and used in various cuisine for salsas and chutneys. Used extensively in Asian cuisine, including garnishes. Coriander roots have a deeper flavor and used in Thai curry pastes and Thai hot and sour soup. 
Coriander is ground for blending purposes like garam masala or curry powder. Check out the recipe in the playlist. Brings out the flavor in biltong, which is dried beef, also known as jerky. Next up is cumin. Similarly, cumin is blended to make curry powders, also used in Tex Mix, Mexican chili powder with cumin powder added to it. Check out the chicken curry recipe in the playlist. Dried red spur chilies, next. Said to have originated from Central and South America and later introduced to Asia, Pic Chi Fa. These chilies grow in an upright fashion, point into the sky and are mild to moderate in heat. Check out the dipping sauce recipe in the playlist. Used extensively in Thai cuisine, blended with other herbs and spices to make curry paste. Check out this Thai chili paste recipe in the playlist. Then try making this dish sauteed clams with Thai chili paste. Cinnamon. This is taken from the inner bark of the most common cassia species of cinnamon tree. Used in savory and sweet dishes, this is both a spice and a flavoring ingredient. Used in cuisines like Turkish, Moroccan, Persian and Mexican. From candies to drinks, including liquor, baking, cereals and even incense sticks. This picture illustrates the time when I made a small batch of curry powder, coriander seeds, black pepper corns, cumin, cardamom, bay leaves, curry leaves, to name a few, including cinnamon. These spices have been toasted separately and then ground to make a curry powder. Next we move on to bay leaves. There are several varieties and here are a few. West Indian, Mexican, Indian, Californian and Indonesian bay leaf. Indian bay leaf is also used widely in Mughalai cuisine, biryani, korma and garam masalas to name a few. Unlike the round version, it's long and pointy with a cinnamon like flavor. Mexican bay leaf mild with a slight herbal flavor. The California bay leaf tree grows up to a height of 80 meters, four times the height of the Indian bay leaf tree. We move on to the West Indies bay leaf which is said to be more flavorful than most of their counterparts. It is aromatic and very distinct in flavor. One of the ingredients in this tasty Jamaican jerk chicken. Also used in my oxtail recipe. Give it a try. Not forgetting Filipino chicken adobo. Let's not forget that the bay leaf is used in classical cooking of the French, American, Italian and European cuisine. The Indonesian bay leaf is native to Indonesia and is not commonly found elsewhere. Commonly used in a steamed coconut rice and nasi goreng. So a little information there for you. This rounds up the video. There's a lot of information about the health benefits of these ingredients. Check them out. I hope you liked the video. Thanks for watching. Majid's Kitchen.